So, welcome back to another episode, and today I thought I'd look at my Neo Geo collection. It's not the biggest Neo Geo collection in the world, but it is mine, and I got some stories about it. I can't afford everything that's impossible, but the one thing that I can't afford is this Terry Bogard outfit, and I will pull it out every single time because, hell, every day is good to dress up as Terry Bogard. Now, let's just start off how I even got a Neo Geo. It was on my wish list, as I've said a thousand times, I wanted a Neo Geo, but it was so super expensive. I'd seen it in the arcade, I loved it. I saw the home console and I was like, well, that's unobtainable. And it was till I was 21 years old. And one day I decided to look in the buy and sell magazine. So before eBay, there was a buy and sell magazine and you'd buy it and people had put things up for sale like in Vancouver here. So I was looking through and I see a Neo Geo gold system with two controllers, the main units, and Art of Fighting 2 for $250. And $250 was a steal to jump in at this point. I was like, whoa, that's almost the price of a game. I'm, I'm in. I counted my pennies. I smashed open the piggy bank and I went over this person's place and I it's so weird that I still remember the person. I remember talking to them at the front door and they're like, yeah, we were really into this, but it's a very expensive machine. So we're selling it up and we're buying some, you know, different machines in the future and stuff like that. I, I think they were buying an N64 or something like that. Oh, that's off the top of my head. But I just grabbed it off them and I'm like, it works, right? Everything's good. They're like, oh yeah. I came home, I hooked it up and here's the very first game. This is the game itself from 22 years ago when I picked up my Neo Geo. Art of Fighting 2, and what a great game this was. Uh, it was a fighting game where when you beat up the other character, they, they actually took damage on their face. The characters were huge, they were the size of the screen. We had Ryo in here, we had Robert, which was really a Steven Seagal knockoff guy. Totally, totally amazing, and I'll never forget watching, because William Chow, the King of Smut 95 back then, had a whole bunch of VHS tapes full of Neo Geo commercials and I would just grab them off him and I'd sit and binge watch Neo Geo commercials and I always remember, you know, go, 100 Mega Shock, Neo Geo, and they, they'd always show Art of Fighting 2 and they had live action of these two characters here beating the hell out of uh, gang members and I, I was so happy to get this and people came over to my house and were like, oh my god. God, like, look at the graphics on this thing. And yeah, I felt really cool with Art of Fighting 2. And so that was my initial game and I loved it. But of course, I needed more games. And I couldn't, I couldn't afford $250 games. I thought, well, maybe if a really great one comes out, I'll get it. So I went to a used video game store and I think this video game store was only open for six months. Every time I'd walk in, there was like just boxes of games. It was very disorganized and uh, the people who owned the store never gave anyone any attention when you walked in. They would just be like, oh yeah, I think there's something over there. They just, no wonder they went out of business. And they probably went out of business for selling Neo Geo games for as cheap as they did. And I got this, my arcade favorite, Magician Lord. I got this for $25 Canadian. So American, that probably works out to about $2 now. I was so thrilled to get this. And I came home and uh, I played the living hell out of it and I didn't do well at it and I couldn't figure out why. And that's because the difficulty was set to the highest difficulty. And we got to the last boss on that difficulty because we thought that's how hard the game was. And I was like, I don't remember it being this hard in the arcade, but Magician Lord is a great side view action game where you turn into different characters, like a shinobi character, a dragon character. It was such a cool game and the graphics were like, you couldn't believe the parallax scrolling at the time. Now, in the wonderful days of arcades, Nam 1975 always captured my imagination up at the local arcade that I was at. I think what did it for me, the gameplay was kind of cool, is that you were shooting uh, with a crosshair against different enemies in a Vietnam setting. You could play two players. But what really, kind of when I first saw the game, what really made an impact on me was the opening. Roll it. Summer, 1975. A nightmare awaits me. I am being recalled to Nong Torm headquarters. Do I have to go back to the hell again? Ah! 
The main character looked totally psychotic. It was a, obviously a take on Apocalypse Now, but I always loved it. And look at the box art on these Neo Geo games back then. They were so well done. The beautiful paintings. And I gotta say that. And one other thing I wanna say about Neo Geo games. If you've never been up close to a Neo Geo game, this is gonna sound crazy. Open it up, smell it. That is the Neo Geo smell. I, I'm not kidding. That plasticky smell, it's so strong in every single game. The way it comes out of the factory, the way the cases are made. But that's one thing that is so uniquely Neo Geo, is that smell. To be honest, I open it up every once in a while and smell, I'm like, ah, Neo Geo, those are the days. And speaking of those are the days, I picked up Burning Fight from the same place that I got Magician Lord from. And how is Burning Fight? It's really a poor man's final fight. It's one of the early side view, uh, you know, beat em ups on the Neo Geo. It's not a great game, but it was my game, and so I liked it. And I finished this game, you sit down, you finish it, and you're like, why did I just spend $30 on this game? This was like so easy. You beat it, I swear to God, in like 10, 15 minutes. But the fun was inviting other friends over, playing it over and over, and trying to do different things in it. It was, as I say, I was excited about having a Neo Geo, so having Burning Fight that I saw in an arcade on here was a cool thing. Here's two games that I got my money's worth out of like no other. The Baseball Star games. I gotta show you guys this. The Baseball Star games. I played baseball as a kid. I was not a fan of playing the game itself. I appreciated it, but it wasn't for me. I was always like, oh my god, I gotta go play baseball again. I was like, damn. But... The Neo Geo made it cool for me. I loved playing against my friends and that's where I got the money's worth out of was versus mode. It got so competitive in my house when my friends came over playing Baseball Stars 1. Baseball Stars 2 is where we got the real meat and potatoes there. And I got both of these games for like 25 bucks, under 25 bucks from that same place. At the same time, I also got Cyberlip. That came into the store as well. And that was the end of my cool, cheap Neo Geo games. The store went out of business forever in my mind about the people who never helped me behind the counters, but I bought all their goddamn Neo Geo games. And Cyberlip, I did an entire episode about Cyberlip and about how much I enjoyed it. It was a, a side view action game, kind of inspired by Terminator and The Thing and uh, other kind of classic science fiction movies and has a really cool twisted, uh, you know, twist ending that's really awesome. The one thing that was crazy about this game was the advertisement for it, where I've talked about it in the review, I've got to do it again because it was so funny back then, I think a lot of people missed it, was they were talking about this game and they were showing this girl and she was all like dressed in lingerie and she's like saying, oh my boyfriend, he never pays attention to me and he's playing like the Neo Geo and he's totally into it. And I said back then, I said, that would never happen in reality and then I made this skit. Johnny, I need you. I want you. What? I don't have time for you. I'm playing Dynamite Ducks. <laughs> ducks. It's all about ducks. I really enjoyed editing that together. Okay, we gotta move on. I think in anybody who has a Neo Geo will always have World Heroes in their collection if they want it or they don't want it. And I gotta say, I loved World Heroes. I really loved World Heroes when I first played it. World Heroes 2 was where I really enjoyed it. But World Heroes uh, you know, 1 was interesting. I loved the characters Hanzo and Fuma. I thought they were kind of a cool alternative to Ryu and Ken. I liked the, some of the, the other characters, Rasputin and all the characters throughout time. And that's the thing, it's a fighting game where you fight fighters across different time periods. And I thought it was kind of nuts you fight like a Nazi uh, robot at one point. It's pretty wild stuff. Here we go, when I reviewed Cyberlip, I also reviewed this Ninja Combat. It was a game in the arcade that you were walking by, you take another look and you're like, Oh my god, this is incredible. And then you play it. I think, the, I think the game gets knocked a lot now. I think a lot of people talk down about Ninja Combat. But at the time in the arcades, this was a very beautiful looking game. It's very simplistic. It's easily beaten. It's one of those Neo Geo games where you just kept putting quarters in and you get to the end. That's what a lot of Neo Geo games were all about. And that's where we get into 
a couple of really good ones. I told this story many times. Samurai Showdown, I nearly got mugged in Hawaii, discovering this game for the first time. A Street Fighter game with swords. You can knock the swords out of your opponent's hand. Pretty cool stuff, and I like this, but let's talk about another game I haven't really ever gone into too much, and that is Samurai Spirits 2, Samurai Showdown 2. This was the game where my friend Andrew and me went up to a local 7-Eleven, and there it was, for the very first time, there was like a Dark Stalkers, there was Samurai Showdown 2. It was like heaven, man, it was like heaven, and we couldn't believe how great the animated sprites were in this and how huge they were. Now, Earthquake looked great uh, in the original Samurai Showdown, but now the new cast was even bigger. We were blown away and this, I think this is Andrew's still to this day favorite Samurai Showdown game. I think he enjoyed the original. He played it with me on the 3DO, but this is the game that finally sold him. Now, when I was 21, I went to England and I stayed over there for quite a bit of time and I came back and it was like my renaissance era in video games and in anime. I discovered the King of Smut 95. I discovered his store and he did some great things for me back then. He, I, you know, I was a big fan of Fatal Fury. Look at me now. I'm still a big fan of Fatal Fury. And he had the soundtrack to this game. And I was playing this game. I discovered it in Las Vegas. Uh, Fatal Fury Special. I love Fatal Fury the first game. I like the second game. But Fatal Fury Special was the best of the best in the series for me. At that point, before the real Bounce series began. And... Fatal Fury Special just had everything. It had a huge ro you know, roster of characters, great stages, and great music. And that's what I gotta get to here. William Chow taped from CD the music of this game. And I gotta tell you that video game soundtracks were hard to get about 22 years ago. And he had taped the CD soundtrack onto tape for me. And I remember, this is no joke, I remember driving home from his store and I put the cassette in and I was listening to it all the way home and then Geese Howard's music kicks in and there's, I'll never forget there was a person trying to race me on the highway in my Honda Civic and I had Geese Howard playing, blasting on my stereo. Guess who won that race? You goddamn right. Geese Howard never loses and I, I'll play the song for you right now. Such an incredible song. That pumps me up even now. I want to get back out there racing. But I can't because I got to talk about Fatal Fury. I picked this up a few years ago and this is one nostalgically that I really had to own. It was the first Fatal Fury game I'd seen uh, you know, in the arcade and it was like an alternative to Street Fighter. It was not as good as Street Fighter, but I heard this. It started at the same time in development. so. I was kind of shocked at that. I thought it was a clone. I was wrong about that. It's not a clone. It's a good fighter that got better with everyone, and you know, especially into the real bout series. 1994. I opened up a Famitsu magazine, and they were showing this game, The King of Fighters 94. They were combining Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury into one game with some extra characters as a huge brand new versus series, and it was called The King of Fighters. I was like. This looks incredible, and this is one game I wanted so badly, but it was very, very expensive at the time. I picked it up years later, and I gotta say, it's my favorite King of Fighters game of all time. By far, and the, are the others technically better? They are, but nostalgically, this is the first one that I played in arcades. It was the first King of Fighters, and I, I love it for that reason. As much as I love Zelda, because it was the first one I played and it made such a, a mark on me. And this made such a mark on me as well because this is such a great fighting game. It was so cool to have three versus three combat. I loved it, it was such a great game. I had the soundtrack to this playing in my car, but I think I lost all those races. Next up, this is the last Neo Geo game I bought. I think I bought this maybe about a year and a half ago, maybe even two years ago now, and that was World Heroes 2 Jet. I remember I used to make a list of all the Neo Geo games that I wanted to buy. This was always on the list, but even when I owned a Neo Geo, spending over $350 to $400 for a brand new Neo Geo game was a little out of the price range. I waited for these things to get knocked down a little bit on eBay, and that's when I picked them up, and 
World Heroes 2 Jet, to me, was the greatest uh, you know, World Heroes game. It was the, the epitome of that, of that series for me, and I, I really loved it. I loved the, you know, the new characters with the claw and all of that. I, I thought they were a really good, brand new addition to the series, and wow. That ends my look at my Neo Geo collection. Let me say this much. Do I wish I had a bigger Neo Geo collection? You goddamn right. But I couldn't afford it. I marvel looking at some Neo Geo collections out there and go, oh my god, I would love to have that game. Mark of the Wolves. Mark of the Wolves. And these games are unobtainable now. I think for most collectors, especially myself, I can't be spending thousands on one Neo Geo cartridge. But I applaud every single person out there that has a great Neo Geo collection. And, you know, this is just my personal collection and it means a lot to me. The Neo Geo has always meant so much to me and I just wanted to come in and talk about some of those great memories today. So, anyways guys, until next time.